Elon Musk stood on stage at a vibrant campaign event for Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, delivering a clear and urgent message regarding the approaching election. Following a burst of applause, Trump presented Musk, complimenting his technological and space exploration accomplishments. Come on up, Elon, Trump yelled as Musk grabbed the microphone to speak to the enthusiastic assembly. Starting with a joke, Musk said, I'm not just MAGA, I'm Dark Mega, which drew some laughs from the audience. But he soon became grave, stressing the need of strong leadership under trying circumstances. Who among the audience would like to represent America? He asked. Even more energizing the process, he declared that this election will be the most significant in our lifetime and cautioned that fundamental liberties like free speech and the right to bear weapons were under jeopardy. Musk expressly stated, How can we have a fair election without voter ID, calling out states like California that outlawed ID? Musk spoke in a straightforward manner. Register to vote, then ensure everyone else does as well. Drag them to register, he advised, noting that this would be the last election should they not cast ballots. His haste was evident, given only 48 hours left to register in important states, including Georgia and Arizona. He made a strong appeal to action to wrap up his remarks. Be a parasite. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Cast your vote. Count. Voting is important. Inspired by Musk's forceful message on the need of voting in this pivotal election, the audience answered with great cheers. After attending Trump's campaign, Elon Musk sat down with Tucker Carlson to discuss threats directed against him. As Musk descended more into the political and social aspects surrounding Donald Trump's campaign and possible ramifications, the discussion between Musk and Carlson became dark and controversial. Musk said simply, in a startling moment, "'None's even bothered to try to kill Kamala "'cause it's pointless.'" Criticized heavily, the comment focused on Kamala Harris as, in his perspective, only another figurehead. What results? Not anything. Another puppet, he said, his words eliciting Carlson's disbelief mixed with agreement. Musk turned even more focused, implying that nobody would target Joe Biden since, as he put it, it would be meaningless. Carlson concurred, laughing knowingly with Musk, who seemed to savor the challenge of it all. Their discussion then turned to another well-known client list, that of infamous Jeffrey Epstein. Carlson brought up the discrepancy in the prosecution of January 6th protesters, while none of Epstein's client list had been contacted. Just not one person on the F client list, Carlson pointed out with obvious annoyance and asked Musk whether he thought the list would ever see use. Musk answered with a sharp gesture. Should Trump win, that Epstein client list will become public. Musk's implication was weighted. Some of Kamala Harris's richest supporters, he said, were helping her out of fear rather than ideology. Musk claims that these billionaires, especially with relation to the Epstein issue, were afraid of what might happen should Trump come back to power. Some of the billionaires backing Kamala are afraid of that result, Musk said suggesting that strong forces were trying to keep this knowledge under secretation. Sensing the weight of Musk's comment, Carlson moved ahead to ask whether Trump personally might show up on that client list. Musk stopped for a moment, then answered, diverting slightly, but suggesting more profound curiosity. Those aren't edited images, Musk stated vaguely, hinting to possible relationships between Trump and Epstein, but let the audience make their own judgments. The discussion then wandered into speculative land. Growing more heated, Musk discussed how firmly ingrained political elites were in safeguarding one another and cited how no well-known personalities had been charged in relation to Epstein. Though the undercurrent of truth in his comment was difficult to overlook, Musk joked about Trump and most likely would have stormed the Capitol personally if he weren't a billionaire. Carlson asked Musk if he thought law enforcement participated in safeguarding the identities on Epstein's client list as the interview came to an end. Musk answered in a measured voice, implying that it wasn't far-fetched to believe some in positions of authority were working hard to hide those names. 
If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Of course, there might be collaboration, Musk added, implying reference to political and law enforcement leaders who might have personal agendas in preserving the status quo. The interview hardly cast any doubt on Musk's strong and unreserved comments, becoming a hot target for criticism. Along with his backing of Trump, his eagerness to be so candid about high-stakes political and societal concerns would surely create waves in political circles as well as in the media scene. Musk on Epstein and his further contacts, Musk brought to Epstein's first prosecution, noting that many powerful people kept ties to him despite his conviction for sex-related charges. The first one was treated quite gently, Musk observed, citing how a Trump appointee oversaw the first case and stressing the forgiveness Epstein received despite his ties to well-known personalities such Bill Gates, the Clintons, even Trump. Carlson swiftly interjected, noting Epstein's ties to the Virgin Islands and Stacey Plaskett, as well as the financial involvement of Bank of America, which was highly cooperative based on leaked emails, showing a friendly relationship between Epstein and the company even following his conviction. Musk acknowledged that there is no plausible deniability following his already arrest and prosecution for sex crimes. As they talked about Epstein's seeming enjoyment of ongoing elite protection despite his criminal record, the argument got increasingly heated. Particularly singled out as one of the people who kept up their contact with Epstein following the first conviction was Bill Gates. Musk claimed, clearly annoyed, Bill Gates and the Virgin Islands continued to try to contact him. Carlson nodded noting the unusual and unsettling character of Epstein's ongoing influence among the powerful. Carlson added, complimenting Musk's handling of the matter, I absolutely agree with you. He noted how celebrities like Gates and companies like Bank of America were connected to Epstein even after his misdeeds were made public. The two then turned the conversation to the reporter who initially discovered Epstein's crimes. Musk observed that there was a fantastic Southern Florida reporter who assiduously worked on Epstein, praising her for drawing attention to Epstein's activities. Epstein stayed under protection from a network of influential people despite these disclosures, Musk said, who kept him free from more investigation. Carlson resonated with a protection racket, suggesting the possibility of coercion and blackmail at hand. The discussion eventually shifted to Epstein's notorious Caribbean island and his other holdings, including his large ranch in New Mexico. Whether it was his island in the Caribbean, or his house in New Mexico or on the Lita Express, Musk and Carlson speculated on the activities that took place in 2003 these remote areas, Musk suggesting that Epstein might have used them to gather compromising information on his high-profile guests, referencing Epstein's private jet. Along with folks like Donald Trump and Bill Clinton, he would journey the globe. Clearly fascinated, Carlson pushed forward. And do you suppose they knew about these folks? He queried. Musk answered indirectly, but he indicated the evidence was sufficient to be damning. Musk left the audience to consider the degree of Epstein's impact over some of the most influential people in the world, warming them to the rich and strong and maybe holding knowledge on them. It became abundantly evident as the conversation went on that Musk and Carlson thought Epstein's network was far more sophisticated and subtle than anyone had known. They speculated on the part Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's longtime friend who had previously been found guilty of sex trafficking, played. Musk mentioned the enigmatic death of Maxwell's father, Robert Maxwell, who had passed on a yacht bearing her under dubious circumstances. It's dubious, Musk remarked, referencing the linked and muddy world Epstein and Maxwell worked in. Deeper Musk and Carlson dug into the discussion, the more obvious it was that they thought Epstein's impact went well beyond what was public knowledge. It goes beyond his riches or his belongings, Musk said. It's about his degree of entwine in the life of these strong individuals. Emphasizing the changing terrain of political violence in America, 
Carlson and Musk's analysis of the ramifications of present security policies for Trump sparked heated debate on election security and integrity. Musk reclined, his voice more somber. The basic concept of political violence has evolved into a regular topic of discussion in our day. It bothers me. Especially against Trump, he said, we have seen how serious these threats are. Carlson nodded and considered how drastically the language around political leaders has changed. You are accurate. Regardless of their party affiliation, the emphasis seems to have shifted into a blame game instead of addressing the actual concern, that of public office's safety. As they discussed the culture surrounding political figures and their vulnerabilities, Musk drew a parallel to the entertainment industry, mentioning figures like Puff Daddy. Look at people like Puff Daddy, Musk said, a legitimate producer with legitimate relationships in the music industry. He had his normal business operations and then there were those after-hours operations. The implication was clear. Just as the music industry has its secrets, so too does the world of politics, and the lines often blur. Carlson interjected, questioning the motivations of high-profile individuals who associated with Epstein. Was Gates just going to conferences that Epstein set up, or was he more involved? That's the real question, he probed. Musk appeared skeptical. It's fascinating to imagine what might break open if the truth came out, he remarked, but let's not get carried away. People want to point fingers without real evidence. The conversation shifted back to the current political climate. Carlson remarked on the disparity in reactions to political violence, highlighting that while Trump faced serious threats, the mainstream media focused more on the rhetoric from the right. It's interesting, he said, that the ones claiming to be victims of violence are often the ones with significant security details. Kamala Harris, Biden, they're not on the front lines like Trump. They don't get the same threats. Musk nodded in agreement. Thank God they have security. Everyone in that position needs it. But maybe it's time we reconsider how we handle security for all candidates, especially when someone like Trump is back on the campaign trail. Carlson pointed out that Trump's security had been increased since the attempts on his life, but it raised questions about the Secret Service's reliance on local law enforcement, which can vary widely in capability and resources. This isn't just a Trump issue, Carlson emphasized. It's about the security of our democracy. How do we expect our leaders to function if their safety isn't guaranteed? We have to demand better from our security services, especially in unprecedented situations. Musk leaned in, his expression thoughtful. It's a reflection of broader issues we face as a society. When political violence is normalized, everyone suffers. We need to start talking about these problems more openly, less about who's to blame, and more about how to fix it. The conversation concluded with both men acknowledging the complexity of the issues at hand. They understood that the questions surrounding Epstein, political violence, and security were deeply interconnected and reflected a larger narrative about power, influence, and the fragility of public trust in leadership. On the topic of being canceled, Carlson shifted in his seat, taking a moment to gather his thoughts. You bring up a good point about Elon and the dynamics of his commentary. He's certainly not shy about voicing his opinions, but that can backfire when you're at the level of influence he has. It's crucial to choose your words carefully. If he's seen as undermining public figures like Kamala Harris or Biden, it could not only alienate potential supporters, but also spark outrage. Musk nodded, his fingers steepled in thought. Exactly. The stakes are incredibly high. And let's be clear, we're not just talking about political fallout. There's a broader social responsibility that comes with having a platform. People in power, whether they're politicians or tech moguls, need to recognize the weight of their words. Carlson leaned forward, decided to delve deeper. But the challenge remains. How do we hold politicians accountable for their actions while also ensuring the safety and dignity of those in public office? AOC, as you mentioned, made some solid points about the Secret Service's failures. This isn't just about Trump. 
It's about the integrity of our political system. If we can't protect our leaders, how can we expect them to lead effectively? The conversation naturally flowed to the idea of political identity. Take Harris, for instance, Musk said, continuing to elaborate on his earlier point. She's become a blank canvas. The way she operates, it seems like she's more concerned about maintaining a seat at the table than actually pushing any progressive agenda. And isn't that the crux of the issue? Carlson interjected. When you have politicians who blend into the establishment and avoid taking a definitive stand, it creates a void. People start looking for alternatives. And that's when you get figures like Trump, who can galvanize support through a clear and distinct message. They see him as a fighter against the status quo. Musk contemplated that for a moment. True. Trump embodies a unique political persona, one that both terrifies and excites people. There's an unpredictability to him that resonates with those who feel disenfranchised. If he were to be removed from the picture, it's not just about continuity of policies. It's about the vacuum left behind in that passionate, fervent energy. That's what supporters are afraid of losing. And here we are, Carlson added, in a time when the stakes have never felt higher. The conversation around security, rhetoric, and political identity isn't just theoretical. It's playing out in real time, impacting lives and shaping the future of our democracy. As we continue to debate these issues, we have to remember that words matter. It's a fine line between free speech and incitement, and navigating that line is becoming increasingly complicated. Musk sighed, glancing at the clock. It's a tightrope act, but what I find most troubling is the echo chamber we're all trapped in. Instead of healthy discourse, we're surrounded by noise. Everyone's afraid to say anything that might rock the boat, and that's not how progress is made. Carlson leaned back in his chair, a contemplative look crossing his face. Perhaps that's where the role of media comes in. We have a responsibility to foster discussions that cut through the chaos. It's about encouraging honesty and holding people accountable, especially those in positions of power. If we want to see real change, it starts with meaningful dialogue. As the segment wrapped up, they agreed on the necessity of a renewed focus on accountability, empathy, and responsibility in public discourse. The world outside was rife with complexities, but through their exchange, a glimmer of hope shone. A possibility that perhaps understanding and constructive conversation could still thrive amidst the turmoil. Their discussion may have been just a moment in time, but it underscored the critical importance of addressing the roots of political strife and the power dynamics at play. The audience was left pondering not just the current state of affairs, but the potential paths forward in an increasingly polarized world. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. Thanks for watching. Make sure to click the video on your screen.